What's going on, guys? All right, so quick, uh, before I start, I'm going to put some helpful little timestamps up here, um, depending on what you want to learn about uh, from this video. So uh, without further ado, let's go to the intro. All right, guys, so you clicked on this video. Um, it's probably, obviously, for um, F-16 avionics. Uh, maybe you're thinking about getting this job. Maybe it's on your list. Maybe you already got this job, and you're in tech school, or you're in basic, and you're wondering, what the hell's going to happen? All right, so I, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, I've been in the Air Force for four years. Um, I've been on the actual job itself for going on three years, three years, because your tech school and basic training is about a year. Um, basically, just an overview of what it is, first of all. The last part of the actual AFSC tells you that it's just F-16s. So A, B, and C are different airframes. Basically, what we do is we work on a lot of the, um, how do you say it, like uh, computer uh, electronics that go on in this jets, right? So they're they're pretty future. Well, I mean, the F-16 is a little bit older, right? So, but they're still pretty futuristic and they have um, computer systems in them, targeting systems, uh, pods that go on the side. If you don't know what that is, Google that because I'm not going to talk too much about that part. Um, but a lot of the targeting system radar, um, basically, if it goes on in the cockpit, it's probably us. All right, so tech school. Tech school's in Shepard Air Force Base. Um, it's about, I think mine was, mine took a little bit longer because it's two parts, right? So first part is going to be your basic electronics essentially you're taking a college level more or less electronics course right and then once you graduate from that um you're going to be doing your actual avionics on whatever airframe you're assigned to so um that lasts for another i believe seven months but in between there you might have a little bit of gap so your tech school may vary um but for me it was about 10 months um and nothing crazy some people say it's pretty difficult it's a little bit tough um, you will have to do some studying uh, to get by because you basically have to know everything that goes on in the jet it's a lot more in depth than a lot of other people's jobs as far as like maintenance world all right so bases you can go to right depending on what aircraft you get selected for or what your aircraft you're going to be working on um, that's where you're going to go basically you can't work on any other jet if you're in this career field as of now Okay, so um, let's talk about transferability, right? So how can you get, can you transfer this job to the civilian world pretty well? Actually, uh, this is probably one of the better jobs to do that with. Um, this job pays pretty well on the outside if you want to continue doing it, working on civilian aircraft, um, fixing them. Um, there's a lot of avionics. Avionics means um, anything, like I said, anything in the cockpit, you know, there's just because there's not target targeting systems and weapons on civilian aircraft doesn't mean they don't have uh, radar systems for weather or um, air data systems and things like that. So um, this transfers pretty well and you can probably land a pretty decent job. Um, also, there's something called a AMP and FCC. So in the civilian world, um, generally people go to school for a year or two years um to get these licensing um in order to even work on these aircraft you get it right off the bat just by having years of experience uh, and not only that it looks a lot better um if you already have been you know in the job and not just in school learning about it for all this time um so transferability is pretty high um and i'm not going to talk about wages because depending on where you want to live it's going to vary all right, so security clearance. You only need a secret security clearance to work in this job. Um, you don't need top secret or anything like that. So um, the investigation process isn't as long or as hard. All right, so let's just go like over maybe a day in the life of, right? So what a normal day for me might look like. And keep in mind, nothing's ever like normal in the military. Everything's always changing. And especially depending on what base you go to, and what aircraft you're on things are going to be different but just keep that in mind um, 
what a day in the life of for me is like. So um, normally, also another disclaimer, um, I have not actually been working on the flight line for the past year. So I've been in um, what's called support. So that's like basically the tool room. So I issue and turn in tools. So I haven't actually worked on aircraft for about a year, but I still know I was still on the flight line for about two years prior to that. So I know exactly what goes on and I have a pretty good feeling about it. Anyways, day in the life, day in the life. Uh, so normally you'd come in and what happens is you kind of get uh, a feel of what the day is going to be like um, from your last shift. So you turn over from them, depending on what jobs they have to do, you might get put on a job um, fixing aircraft, like troubleshooting, uh, wiring, um, changing pods, um, just doing normal stuff. Maybe you're gonna talk to a pilot that came down with an issue and you need to literally talk to him and say, hey sir, what's going on? How can I help? Like, you know, just so you can, cause you're that guy that fixes that problem. So they're gonna come to you. And then, you know, depending on how much work there is for that day, you might stay a little bit later, um, finish up your work and then you get home. So if you are into um, like uh, electronics, um, things like, I wouldn't say computers because computers is not exactly like, you don't work on like computers or like operating systems, you don't get that deep. But if you like working on electronics, and you like, you know, seeing some of these jets and literally sitting in the cockpit sometimes it's pretty cool where you get to sit in the cockpit and, you know, um, turn on all, turn on the jet, run it and turn on the power and go through the, all the systems. Um, so if you like doing some of that sort of stuff, um, it's a pretty cool job. It transfers very well to the civilian world. And, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to tell me. There's a lot of things that I won't talk about, um, in this video. Um, simply because it's the military, you know, I'm not going to talk about everything that goes on in the military um, for obvious reasons. Um, but if you have any other questions just about the job and how I like it and things like that and anything really, um, go ahead and let me know. Uh, just comment uh, if you want to. Um, all right. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you guys like and comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll make sure to put out some more videos like this if you guys like them. All right.